Hey guys, in this video I want to show how to configure the inputs and outputs in the robot, uh, especially the user operator pan panel bits, which will be especially useful when trying to interface the robot with an external device. So first we're going to go to menu, and then scroll down to I.O., and you're going to find UOP. Hit enter, so it's going to default, it's going to show you the uh, either whether it's the UOP inputs or outputs, but you can just toggle between those using F3 outputs inputs so most of the time you're really only really going to need the first eight bits um, in these UOP menus and that's what I'm going to show here so once you're here let's configure the UOP inputs first and just a reminder that UOP inputs are really outputs from the PLC and inputs to the robot so just keeping that straight so now we hit F2 to configure the first thing you want to do is set your range so like I said before I'm going to use bits from our yeah, bits one through eight. Next, you want to set your rack number. So rack 89 correlates with ethernet IP communication. If you're doing device net or Profibus or anything like that, you're gonna have a different rack number, which you can find on uh, one of the ethernet or one of the manuals from Bannock. Next, you're gonna set your slot. So the slot correlates with the um, section of the adapter that you're using so in this case if I'm communicating with a PLC uh, I'm gonna set that to slot one let's say I want to communicate with my PC as well then I'll set that one to slot two it's still gonna be the same rack which is gonna be a different slot in order for the robot to differentiate the signals next you're gonna go over to your start instance so this is gonna correlate more to the assembly instances you'll find on the PLC side so you can think about it as there's a variety um, or like there's a certain range of bits this is going to map to. Um, so the first bit of 8, right, so on your range of 1 through 8 bits, that first bit is going to map to your 21st on the other side. So uh, I guess an example of this would be uh, we're transmitting four 16-bit words. So that means that the first word is going to go from 0 to 16. The second word, you're going to go five more so say all right in the plc side it's actually gonna be zero to 15. so your um, first bit of the user input signal is going to be on bit four of the second word on the plc um, so that's kind of how you can figure that out you can set it to whatever you want um, i just usually set it to 21. Uh, so you just got to make sure they don't overlap with bits on your uh, our digital input and output bits so once we have this configured, we can go to the outputs side. So here's my output side. So again, uh, range one through eight. I have a rack 89, slot one, and start at 21. So you don't have to worry about the inputs and outputs overlapping because they're gonna go in as different, uh, different I guess, tabs on uh, your PLCs, right? Because they're gonna be input tabs and output tabs. So don't worry about that. And then there's also, you're gonna see an active here. So if you change this, so let's say I change this to um, 10, it's gonna say pending. And then you're gonna to have to power cycle the robot in order to make those changes. So I'll turn it back to eight. And then again, I'm gonna to have to power cycle the robot in order to make those changes as well. But that's just an example of how you would change something like that. And yeah, next I'll show you how these correlate with the PLC uh, address in the Studio 5000. Alright guys, now we're back on the Studio 5000 side. So again, we're going to go into our controller tags so I can help show how I'm going to set the descriptions on each of the inputs and outputs. And go into here. I can come down. I'll start with my user operator panel inputs. So if I open this guy up, go into the first word so remember how i said that we had assembly instance 21 was the start of the user operator panel inputs so that means that this will go 0 through 15 so then we need that'll be 16 bits so you gotta go up, up another five so we'll see the first bit starting on number four so uh, that's just an easy way to map it based on your assembly instances so next, if you don't want to go that way, there's a different way you can do it. So let's say I didn't have any of these description. An easy way is you know that the user operator panel bit eight is your TP enable, all right? So here, I can just sit here as my PLC is online 
and I can switch the teach pennant from disabled to enabled. So this is a teach pennant off, that's teach pennant on. So by looking for that bit to switch, you automatically know what your eighth bit of UOP signals are. Um, and from there, you can just populate the rest of these um, bits in the Studio 5000. So just a quick description here. So at perch, this just means that your robot is on the first position of the program. Fault, that's pretty self-explanatory. Your robot's faulted out. Motion held, so that's just, that means that your, um, you hit the hold bit or the robot just came to a stop and it can just be resumed again. Uh, program paused, pretty self-explanatory. Program running, obvious. Um, system ready, so this is on when a certain number of bits um, are in an active state, which tell you if the robot is ready to run. So that's like if the robot's not faulted um, and the TP is not enabled in auto mode. Uh, and again, command enable, that means that the robot is ready to be triggered from an external device to start. So now if we come over here, so we know that that first bit is going to start on word number one, and it'll be on data point number four. So we can come dive into our robot outputs. So I can open it. So again, we're going to go to word number one. Now, these are going to be the inputs to the robot output from the PLC. So I'll do a quick um, quick description of some of these. So the enable bit that you want to always stay on. So that just means the robot's ready to start. Home, this is just, you don't really need to use this. Um, you can attach a macro. Um, you can have this trigger like a macro to go to the home position of the robot. But again, Sometimes I don't like to do that just because when you tell the robot to just go home, you don't really know it's in its way. So um, I tend not to do that. You have your start bit. So this is where you can just trigger the um, program to start from an external device. Fault reset. So this is just like your shift reset on your teach pendant, except you can do it from like an HMI. Um, cycle stops. So this is where you can where you can just stop the um, production cycle of the program. Um, SF, SPD. This, I'm not really sure what it does, uh, but in order for the robot to start, uh, it does have to be in the on state. Hold and IMSTP, so hold will put the robot to a slow stop, and you can just resume. IMSTP, this will fault the robot. So this will bring it to an immediate stop and create a fault. Um, so IMSTP, hold, SFSPD, and then enable. Those are all the bits that need to be in an on state in order for the robot to start. So next, I'm going to show you guys a little HMI setup just to kind of help show what each of these bits do and the effect they have on the robot. In this section, I just want to show a simple HMI screen that I made to help show what each of the UOP signals does and what needs to be enabled in order for the robot to start. So as you can see here, the um, these four bits here, these show the four bits that need to be enabled um, as outputs to the PLC or inputs to the robot uh, for the robot to be able to start. So right now I can start the robot. If, I, if any of these bits drop, it will hold the robot. And I will not be able to start the robot unless this bit is set back to 1. And I can start the robot. The IMSTP bit, this is used to fault the robot. So as you can see, you can use a sensor to trigger that bit if some a uh, door latch is broken or anything like that. And then this bit needs to be reset to one in order for faults to be reset. Now, there's also, I made an IO screen to show each of the inputs to the PLC or outputs from the robot. So this kind of tells you what's going on on the robot side for you to help give your operator a little bit more visualization of what's going on in the system. So right now you can see the program is paused, the system's ready and commands enabled. So that means the system's ready to be started. So I can start the system. If I fault the robot, and I go back here, you can see it tells you that it's faulted and program's paused. If I reset faults, and I hold the robot, or I start the, ro start the system, hold the robot, 
go back to the IO screen, you can see it tells you that the motion's held, program's paused, and it's still ready to be started. So I can reset and I start the robot again. And uh, I hope this helped just to show what each of these bits does and how you can implement them in your system to help the operator know what's going on in the system.